Greetings to all. In the last lecture, we have discussed the sizing equations of an electrical machines with respect to the d square l product equation and d cube l product equation, right. In this lecture, we will discuss d power 2.5 into l sizing equation and then by considering the rotor geometry, we can see here the rotor geometry we will consider flux densities at the different parts of rotor core. The flux densities at the back iron, flux densities at the teeth and flux densities at the air gap we will consider and then actual current density of the rotor also we can consider. Based on that we will derive the power equation. As of now we have not considered the rotor geometry right like slot information as well as flux densities at the rotor core we have not considered and we have derived the power equations with respect to the d square l product, d cube l product, okay. First we will see the output equation with respect to the d power 2.5 l equation and after that power equations in terms of rotor geometry we will see. First the power equation in terms of d square l product is equals to some output constant into d i s square into l e. This is the output power equation into synchronous speed will be there okay. And then output power equation in terms of d cube l terms constant c 1 into d naught s cube l e into synchronous speed okay that is what we have seen in the last lectures right. Based on these two equations we will derive the power equation in terms of d power 2.5 l. We can utilize this equation or d cube l equation to find the different dimensions of the machine like inner diameter of the stator and outer diameter of the stator and length of the core. Just multiply these two equations p naught square that is output power square is equals to c naught into c 1 okay d naught s cube into l e square and d i s square will be there into n s square okay. From here substitute lambda value in this equation here lambda is equals to d i s by d naught s that means d i s is equals to lambda into d naught s. So, c naught c 1 the output power constants in place of d i s square substitute lambda square into d naught s square and then d naught s cube into l e square n s square. Now, take the square root output power is equals to c naught and c 1 square root into lambda square d naught s output diameter uh, outer outer diameter of the stator power 5 and length of a core square and synchronous speed square. So, finally, we can see output constant c naught and c 1 square root into lambda and then d naught s power 2.5 into length core length and then synchronous speed. This is the power equation in terms of d power 2.5 L e. This term we can represent it as a constant C 2 then the power equation C 2 into d naught s that is outer diameter of the stator power 2.5 into length of a core into synchronous speed. This is the third equation final equations with respect to the d square l and d cube l and d power 2.5 l. These are the power equations 
with respect to the stator side to find the key dimensions like stator core length and inner diameter of the stator and outer diameter of the stator. Okay. In these equations we have not considered the rotor geometry okay. like what is the flux densities at the uh, back iron flux densities at the teeth and flux densities at the air gap different flux densities we have not considered we can observe in this figure these are with respect to the stator side flux density at the back iron is nothing but BT uh, BCR flux density value at the back iron is BCR and flux density at the teeth is nothing but BTR and flux at the air gap will be same. So, we have to consider the BG, BTR and BCR flux density at the teeth and flux densities at the back iron and slot information or slot geometry. Okay. The procedure is same okay, to analyze the power equations. First, we have to write the slot area, slot area of the rotor AR. We know the slot uh, dimensions, the slot opening is nothing but D naught R and the radius at the top side of the uh, slot is R 1 R and the uh, depth of the rotor slot is D S R and the radius at the bottom side of the slot is nothing but R 2 R and back iron length is nothing but D C R and width of the rotor teeth is T R. Based on these dimensions, we have to calculate the slot area. Okay. Find the slot area by considering all these dimensions and then find the BGR value. B, uh, BTR value, flux density at the teeth, flux density at the air gap, flux density at the back iron. Calculate these three values and find the ratios and third step calculate the win, uh, width W1 R that is nothing but this one and this is W1 R and this is W2 R. Okay, slot width like we are seeing the slot in this manner right. Okay, here this is R1 R and this is DS R, this is R2 R and back iron will be DC R, width of the slot will be W1 R, W2 R. Okay. Calculate the W1 R, W2 R and DC R and teeth width similar to the analysis what we have done for the stator side and then derive the slot area equation AR in terms of DIS, uh, DIR D naught R okay, inner diameter of the rotor and outer diameter of the rotor derive the uh, area of the slot and represent the function copper function with respect to the rotor F R of lambda and finally, find the power equation with respect to the rotor side, consider the lossless system and power is e uh, in terms of F naught R of lambda, this is the output function. Then remaining terms will be in terms of D naught R cube 
into L e ok some constants will come. So, same procedure we can follow to derive the power equations at the rotor side by considering the rotor geometry the final power equations will come in this manner power output power equals to C 1 or C 3 I will take C 3 into D naught R cube L e and C 4 D naught R power 2.5 L e output power sh should come in this manner into synchronous speeds this is equation number 4 and equation number 5. I am not deriving these equations we can derive these two equations by similar uh, procedure with respect to the stator side ok. So, with this I am concluding this lecture in this lecture we have seen the equations with respect to the d power 2.5 uh, L e sizing equations and then rotor side sizing equations procedure we have discussed the same procedures we can follow for design, uh, deriving these equations and these are the power equations with respect to the rotor side ok. Now, we will conclude this lecture thank you.